Hello, I want to try a new series where I live recording what I do when I learn. Like we're going to do something that I don't know how to do. And ChatGPT and other AI tools will help me to figure out, but like, I don't know the outcome. Will I be able to do that or not? Okay, so what are we going to do today? I have uh, a task to integrate a wallet, it's MetaMask wallet, uh, with smart contract and with our Svelte Kit application. So first of all, let me show you what the application is. So it is here. Let me see if it is launched. Let me move this here. Let me make myself smaller. Okay. Okay, it seems like it is launched. Ah, yeah. So here, here we are. Uh, this is a quest and it is text-based quest in space with AI help and uh, web-free stuff. <laughs> so quite fancy, I'd say. Uh, the gate itself is quite simple. So we have some story. It happens in space. On, you are on a spaceship, you are part of a crew. And uh, well, I don't want to spoil all the story. Uh, the game will be available soon, free to play. Um, now more about technical part. So here on the left top part uh, side of the screen, you can see the text itself of what happens in the current scene. We are in some room and this room has an associated image. We are going to have some inventory. Right now it's empty. We just started the new game and we have actions, what we can do. So when we execute some actions, it changes the state of the game. You can think about it as a JSON that we modify and JSON is stored in the database. So when we apply an action, it modifies the state of the game, the save to the database, and then the database gives us back the text uh, for the current state of the game. And uh, we are moving from one room to another room, and we, you know, solve puzzles, fight monsters, uh, you know, it depends on, on the story. Um, my responsibility on this project is to make uh, front-end, back-end, and integration with smart contract. So in our team, we also have a person who, who is doing the story itself, the writing, and another guy is making the smart contract. So I need to glue these parts together in, a, in an application. Uh, okay, so that's about the game itself. Uh, let me show you a little bit uh, of the code. As you can see, we have a Svelte Kit application. It's pretty basic. I think I started learning Svelte Kit, uh, building this app, and I joined a lot. So, and uh, the 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 home page is a list of of uh, games we have right now. It's just one. We can continue existing one or start a new one. And uh, here we load in games from the back end um, and basically display the list. Now it's a lot of HTML spaghetti code here. Then we have the game page itself, like game slash ID. If we go to some game, here is the URL of it. So this swell page is responsible for that. It loads the game state from the back end, basically displays it, and when it's time to apply an action, there is a game store. This is a custom Swell store that has a method apply action. Oops, that that basically sends an HTTP request to an API that modifies the game state. So, and there is a uh, roads for API, for authentication, for games, and for 
NT, uh, NFT stuff. Yeah, I'm still quite new to all this Web3, NFT, you know, it sounds like fancy, a little bit, a little bit outside of my usual world. But, okay, so that's what we have right now. And uh, this homepage is what we are going to modify mostly uh, with today's changes. So what we need to do is instead of uh, having a button start a new game that immediately start the game and you see second game appeared in this list, we need to mint a token. So for those people who don't know this web free crypto stuff, you know, blockchain things, basically you can think about it as there is a database um, in the cloud called blockchain and uh, by minting, so there will be a button called mint, by minting we will create a record in the database that will be linked to our MetaMask wallet that I need to sign in. Uh, that is basically like our user and uh, that token will be linked to our user. But the thing with, you know, this all this NFT stuff is that you can buy and sell tokens. Basically, that's it. Each token in our application context means a game. You can think about it as you can buy or sell save saves of other people well and probably maybe some other stuff in future maybe items maybe maybe something else yeah items is a good example uh, yeah so but right now it's simple to start a new game you need to mint a token that represents this game okay that's what we're going to do now let me show you what a smart contract developer gave me. And uh, so he said, there is a smart contract on Ethereum blockchain. By the way, people who know smart contract stuff, Ethereum blockchain, etc. If I say something wrong, sorry, I'm, I'm pretty new to that one. So I'll, I'll learn together with you. Uh, and Feel free to write in the comments, fix me what I'm saying wrong, how to do it correctly, etc. So basically, we have a deployed smart contract. Um, smart contract, for those who don't know, is basically like a script, a backend script that you can execute from your front end to do some work. Usually, it is done to mean some stuff to buy and sell stuff um, and uh, yeah, modify state of your tokens. So we are going to use smart contract to put the record to that blockchain database about our game. So looking at this page, I have like no idea what is here, what all of this means. The only instructions I got is like, hey, the smart contract have two methods, two functions. Get my tokens, I guess this is uh, it. It returns an array of IDs, array of integers. And uh, one more is a mint, should be in this write part. So read part is like, you can call my tokens for free any amount of times, but write part is the mint itself and uh, it's basically when you mint something you need to pay a gas fee basically a payment for someone else's computer to process this operation using that smart contract and you need to pay this, those guys so if i understand it all correctly I got this page, I got this similar page, I don't know what's the difference, 
and I got the diagram of how it should work in, in general. So let's look at the diagram and figure out what's our next step. We have a backend here, we have a front end, we have a MetaMask and uh, we have a contract and we have JavaScript library ifers.js that I guess is used to interact with smart contract stuff and wallets. So backend is our Svelte kit backend, our API layer. Uh, let's see, the only interaction uh, with it is from our front end is to fetch a list of games by provided list of NFT token IDs. And that will return a list of you know games as JSON. We have already uh, this list of games that is returned from our API. Let me show you. If I refresh page here, we get we get API slash games. So it returns us a data with two games. And uh, basically, as I understand, we are going to do the same thing, but front end will, will tell us what are the IDs of, of the games. It doesn't look very secure, like you probably can provide it any IDs, even if you don't own, own the token. And um, well, first of all, you see other people's game state it's not very sensitive information, but still, but you also can modify like this thing represents like an ownership. And I guess for security reasons, later on, some additional security check will be implemented. Like, hey, we need to validate the request for this token IDs using a wallet signature, something, something. Uh, so let's see what else. That was backend. Uh, front end connects uh, to a MetaMask wallet. By the way, it can be any other wallet provider. Just MetaMask is, I think, one of the most popular out there, and it's easy to use. It just works as your, you know, extension application, and that's it. Uh, connecting your wallet means like, hey, I want a wallet ID that exists inside MetaMask. Well, MetaMask is technically a client for a blockchain and your wallet is not, it lives in MetaMask. Uh, it lives on the blockchain, but MetaMask provides you a nice interface for it, UI. Um, so connect wallet basically asks <clears throat> asks your MetaMask, like, hey, um, I want to get a wallet ID. Could you ask the owner if they authorize it? And then MetaMask pop-up will appear. Actually, let me show you. I think I can show that. Let me just authenticate in MetaMask. Uh, just a moment. Okay. Password. Okay. So this is some test wallet here. I haven't used it before. I tried with my real wallet. Oh, and uh, this list of games updated because I authenticated and I got uh, games linked to that wallet. Okay, and uh, I can disconnect from here and here I can disconnect to and next time I press connect button the MetaMask asks about permission it looks like this I, I just wanted you to, to see this it's basically like um, you can think of open auth authentication like Google Facebook like hey someone wants access to your data 
have do you approve it or not let's say we approve it it has just read access right now and we got the wallet id wonderful by this wallet id from the database we fetch a list of games okay so this part connect wallet is done and we got the public address of the wallet which is its id basically the next step would be to interact with the contract and call my tokens function of it and it should return a list of uh, ids so this part i don't know how to do i got instructions that i should use ethers js library for that uh, for some reason he it says contract he it says ethers js um, maybe the diagram can be a little bit better but it's okay we'll figure out so since i don't know how to do that hello need to be polite uh, i have a well application and i need to integrate smart contract on ethereum network have uh, something like ethers js library how do i do it okay install it in npm yep i think i have a swell kit library that is based on ethers js that has it under the hood and provides swell store this is how i implemented wallet uh, connection but let's see what it provides us so basically we install it we import it we configure it to connect through some provider and uh, okay this thing i heard about so smart contract abi is a json file that describes types and like functions return types of the functions that exist in the smart contract and address i guess it should be one of these yeah not this one so either this one or this one okay and where do i get abi i think it should be it should be somewhere here i think i saw it here yeah this is the source code of the contract oh here we are so this is a pretty big json and uh, this contract uh, also the source code and also contract abi but quite short okay so what else once the contract is configured we can call functions from it await results and uh, that's it and with some signer which i believe is a write access um, through the wallet we can do some functions that modify blockchain like i think mint uh, the function that we are going to implement is a good example here okay um let me ask about these two contracts and what's the difference my smart contract developer provided me with two smart contracts one of them he called a proxy contract what is it Mm 
Mm -hmm. So I guess it's basically a way to communicate with the original contract. And um, in the in the you know blockchain, you can upload the smart contract, but you cannot change it. You can just replace it or upload a new one nearby. I'm not sure about that, but proxy is like has a fixed address, and inside the proxy there is a property like the original contract address, and that original contract address property can be changed. So proxy uh, redirects all the requests to the original contract. And if you change original contract, you just change that property in the proxy. So yeah, that looks like that. Um, now the question is, which contract ABI do we use and which address? Well, I guess proxies because you should usually contact proxy if you have proxy uh, okay so let me look at the library that I use I think it was somewhere here yeah swelp ether store it's a library for where is the browser for swelp to communicate with ether JS but in a swelp way and with stores like it was really easy to integrate wallet um, connection with it. Let's see if it can communicate with contracts. So we need to read docs. Okay, this is a basic stuff. Mm -hmm -hmm. Not sure if I should do any of that before it worked without that. Uh huh. This is how the wallet was connected yeah this is how you can get balance from your wallet uh-huh oh something about contract using the contract store for reactive contract call okay so we need to define a logical name my contract here I think it's an example and we can call it whatever we want and then address of the contract and uh, ABI of the contract okay um, I think we should try so let's go to the source code so in the client and the services I have wallet and here I have import from this uh, module I have this default EVM stores as EVM uh, this is what they use here and I think we just can call this thing on top of it okay I'll do it in the in the end of the file and later on we'll figure out maybe it's uh, it will be time to refactor it okay I want to move this name to a constant from the beginning contract name um, yeah it can be whatever I think original contract called astronauts yeah let's call it this way not like it matter it's just a local variable here okay address I'll just say contract address and uh, ABI contract ABI so we need to define this variables or con Stance, address is string, ABI is also a string. So ABI is a JSON, but I guess we need a string representation of it. Okay. And the return type is a promise void. So it doesn't return anything, but let's catch errors if any will be. Wonderful. Uh, now let's define these things. contract address oh we even got some address contract ABI but this is not our address so this is original contract this is proxy let's get the proxy address here and let's get 
construct ABI. Go to bottom. Nice. Okay, let's see if it works. Uh, I think I will add them just to, to see if it is attached. Uh, well, we'll refresh the page. Contract attached, no error. Wonderful. Okay, we don't need this console log anymore. Uh, I think what we need to do is to try to get the contract. Oh, okay. We don't need to export bra, but I like what you say. And I think it is done differently. Okay, let's check the docs again. So we attached the contract and to communicate with it, we need this store. Inside the store, there will be contracts and uh, we can call functions on it. Okay, seems easy. Let's try. So we need import contracts and here contracts so since it's a store we can subscribe to it let's subscribe and let's log it out okay it seems that it's not instantly initiated our astronauts contract so let's add if if contracts contract name oh well, let's uh, let's use early exit return if it's not set but if it is set we know that it is attached and uh, we can try to call some function on it contract how oh, wait we need to define it contract yep contract does it have our function from this contract abi i don't think so okay so we have the function called my tokens. Yeah, it's defined in the ABI of the original contract. Okay. And let's call it here my tokens. So we need to save the result. Tokens. And we need to await the, the call. And that means the function should be async and we will log it contract tokens is not a function mm. that's a good question why let's see might it be that proxy wait so the contract abi defines what functions are inside what are return types etc but this one is quite short uh, and the region was one is quite long and it has my tokens inside this one doesn't have so if proxy just proxies the request, does it mean we can use original contract ABI, but the proxy address? So we can access my tokens here. Uh, well, I don't know. Let's try. Copy this here. Paste it here. Oh, wow, it's big. We need to move it to a separate file, I think. OK, let's see if it works. Oh, we got something. I even have some token already. 
it might be a smart contract developer made one token for me uh, so it's it's array of big numbers big number is a type in javascript that represents well big number you know javascript has a problem with big numbers and also uh, decimals so big number was introduced recently i think maybe a few years ago to support well big numbers so hex representation here says 0 x 0 2 which i think in decimal would be just two like id of the token is two number two okay this is good we got tokens i'm guessing why it's four of them ah i know i know so probably when i change some part of the code that is not touching the wallet uh, this code here with subscribe is not changed I uh, know the opposite yeah, yeah the opposite so I, I'm changing this file actually but the whole application is not changed so code module reloading keeps the application the same but it replaces single file the wallet ts and we get more logs of tokens let's check it out tokens one tokens two tokens three huh. maybe we need to unsubscribe <laughs> okay Ah, uh, good. But we, we, we can fix all of that later. First of all, we need to integrate the smart contract and call its function and get the data and mean the stuff. The refactoring will come later. Okay, we got tokens, which is good. Now, uh, let's try min something. So, I guess the min is just the same thing. So, I will do... By the way, let's check the diagram first. So after we get tokens, which is array of numbers, we need to send it to our backend that will return us games with such IDs. This is not yet done. Backend works differently at the moment, uh, but backend refactoring will be happen later. Uh, we need to do some minting. So signing mint, I think it will call contract. Ah, yeah. First, it hit MetaMasks and ask the MetaMask uh, wallet owner if he is okay to mint it uh, because it takes uh, some of your uh, Ethereum as gas price, gas fee. So you have to approve or reject it. Then uh, it calls mint in the contract. And we get back transaction hash, whatever it is. I guess it's some transaction ID. And then we can update. Ah, we get update of the transaction status. Uh, let's ask ChatGPT quickly. So this is, I think, the transaction in my smart contract. I have mint function that creates an NFT. How do I call it in the code? No, no, not the free library. Using, let's stop generating this. Ethers JS library. Okay, we define the contract. We define the contract. Define the contract. Yeah, I think this part is done.
transaction hash. Okay, so let's check it out. So const transaction contract mint. Okay, and what is transaction? It has type any. What is transaction await? Uh, GitHub Copilot Pilot suggests to use await dx wait. Uh, what is it? Ah, so this is all about mining. We add transaction to the blockchain, but it is not immediately uh, processed. Some miners should pick up it and process, and they will get the gas fee from us for that. It's like using their computers to approve our operation. And we receive receipt. Okay, uh, well, let's check it out. Receipt and let's log everything. So we have tokens. We have, let's write, let's log everything. Minting, yes. Minting TX, okay. Mint it. I'm guessing how fast is it? Usually when you use a uh, blockchain and you, you know, send money to someone, it can take from a minute, oh well, dozen of seconds at least, to, oh, I don't know, half, half an hour. Is this TX await is for waiting this half an hour or so? We'll know. Let's see. So we're minting. MetaMask popped up. Network is busy. Okay, anyway, this is a fake um, ether on test network, so it should be free. I'm confirming that. Why do I have six? Ah, it's because probably this thing called again and again and again. Should I confirm all of them? Just because I don't know, code is not very reliable. I want to see how it works. Whatever amount. Oh, we got some. Mint in TX. Okay. Is it the right one? Yeah, I think move it. I need to move it to a button. Okay, so we got at least two transactions active and one of them is finished, minted. Okay, uh, let's con um, comment out the mint in itself and I want to see the tokens. Oh, wow, yeah, we got a lot of transactions running in parallel. Okay, we we'll probably need to refactor the code, but we got some NFTs. They are just numbers right now, but in our database, it, they can can become, well, you know, stories and games. Wow, I'm sorry, I'm confused and happy and uh, everything at the same time. So what do we do with it now? I think we need to have um, functions for minting. Uh, well, that's a nice code, but not sure if it's the right code. Okay, this code should work. 
but we need to unsubscribe. How do we unsubscribe from stores in uh, Svelte? I think we should return a function. Unsubscriber or just just call it what is unsubscriber. Ah yeah, yeah, yeah. so it returns uh, const unsubscribe. Okay, wonderful. So once it is minted, we need to unsubscribe. Okay, and that will be mint. Uh, we need to keep track of the minting stage so we can display some load in animation while it is minting. Uh, we can remove this code. Also, we need to export function. Well, right now I'm just refactoring a little bit. Get my tokens. So same thing, we subscribe to contracts, if there is a contract, we use it to get the tokens. Okay, um, but this smells, this code smells, and we need to do it swelled way. Okay, let's refactor a little bit, refactor in time. So we need to move smart contract address and ABI to a separate file. For now, I'll just create it here, wallet constant.cs. No, I don't want translation right now. Okay, so now we can import to use them here. And uh, we need some async store. So in this project, I created a simple custom store. Here it is called async store. Actually, it's a factory that creates such stores. Uh, you provide it with initial value and load function that you want to execute and the store will keep track of the data inside uh, the loading state and error state so and your function is well asynchronous let me show you how i use it so first of all we need to define it i will call it token token store but instead of using writable I will create a sync store and it will be of type I think it's of type uh, number array because uh, the result of the operation is a uh, number array then Uh, yeah, it's kind of what we need. Sorry, I'm silent sometimes. I, I need to read the code that GitHub Copilot generates for us. So we get the contract. If it is... If it is... Defined. We call my tokens on it. Yeah, well... Not what we need. I think what we need, oh well, let's leave it right now. Uh, so how do you use the token store now? The token store has a run function on it, as well as set, update, and subscribe, as you usually would have on a, your a writable store. But the run function will execute this thing, and result will be saved into the store. So uh, when do we call it we need to call it once our contract is attached so let's use contracts subscribe and here we'll check if 
and we need also to unsubscribe unsubscribe because we need to call it just once am i right let me think a little bit so we initiate we initiate the contract it is ready we call for the list of tokens if user wallet is connected so let's let's do it here too and not get is connected yep and if not yet connected, we will return. But if it is connected and contract is there, then we will call run and it will get our tokens. And the tokens will be stored in the store. Wonderful. And we will call it just once. We don't need to wait, so we'll write void. Okay. I'll get my tokens can be removed. Now what about minting? minting 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 so we can leave it as a function that we export from here this is kind of protection shitty code but should work for now but once we get yeah well it should be another sync store i think yeah let's call it mint store uh -huh. void void yeah we don't we don't have any anything to store except the error and is loading operation so the code inside will be this code by the way, we need to export the store itself. Okay, so when we need to call mint, what will happen is this code will execute. And uh, before it is executed, it is marked as is loading true. Once it is done, it is marked as is loading false. So that should keep track of our state. Also, once it is minted, we need to call token store run to load updated list of tokens. Okay. And we don't need to wait, wait for it. Now let's integrate it into our application. We'll just do it on on the on the home page. So right now, on the home page, we have this. It's a list of games from our backend and the start new game button. So instead of start new game, we need to mint new game. So I will keep the old code here. I will just comment it out. And uh, I will replace it with the new one. So if we'll still use is connected, I think then maybe let's let's do this. Is connected. We'll have a button. Inside of uh, the button should say mint new game and on click it will do mint store run. So we need to import the mint store from stores. Is it there? Am I right? A wallet wallet services wallet yeah I, I think I will need to do something else uh, I think it's now a mess of 
services and stores and wallet is inside services but it has stores inside so I need to refactor that also I want token store to display our tokens okay so we are here mean store we need to show loading state mean store is loading we have we show loading animation there is a special component for that if there is an error we show error otherwise if it is not an error and we have a data data well let's actually might be save something mint receipt we can return receipt and uh, maybe you will later on get some transaction token or something minted okay and also here instead of loading games from the back end straight from the database as we do right now i will close it all and comment it out And instead, we will replace it with our token store. If token store is loading. Yep. Token store, do you know token store? It should be here. Maybe we need to do it ourselves a little bit. So if is loading, we need loading. Else, yeah, yeah, you can do it. Continue, please. Okay, we'll just copy it. I think we need to format it a little bit. It's kind of nasty. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's the uh, correct syntax. So, in, but instead of minted, we'll have each. token URI well token is just a number so we'll just display token okay let's see if it works of course we have an error why not have an error but we don't have an error like it's not visible the requested module does not provide export name token store ah that's why okay that makes sense I forgot to export it Okay, 
we're not going to mint anything yet. I need to click a button first. Be patient. Yeah, I'm guessing why it tries to mint something. I think I left a code somewhere for minting. Mint, 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 mint. So mint store. Do we call it anywhere? Ah, okay, yeah. So you need to be careful about this round brackets. So mint new game, we have eight tokens. Connected wallet on mount. Okay, let's try to mint new game. We confirm it. I think it should display some loading animation. Hello. And it will mint in a few seconds maybe. Okay, while it does, let's let's look at the is loading animation. Is loading. So it should be here. I think we need to output it. Minted. And we got token number nine. Okay, so the only thing left is we need to figure out where is the loading state. So what I use usually is I use this prefig and inside I use JSON stringify mint store. Yep, that should do the trick. We can even add this, not sure if it will work. Is loading false, is error no. Okay, let's try again. We click it. It doesn't say it's loading. I think I messed with the code a little bit. Yeah. Okay, we need to check the run function. Mean store. Ah, right. So, it is a synchronous function and it should return a promise but what it actually does it makes a callback so when it does subscribe what actually happens this line got executed unsubscribe function is created and execution of this whole anonymous function is ended so it's like immediately is loading became true and then immediately false so we need to solve it by having a custom promise so let's write wrap with custom promise okay oh, sorry yeah, yeah please continue nice Ten bucks spent on GitHub Copilot is well spent. We don't actually need to reject. We don't need this comment anymore. Okay, let's see now. So we have token number ten here. Let's uh, refresh it. Let's click again. Here is our loading animation. Nice. So and it should become false once transaction is processed. I think we need to put it inside the button. Yeah. But this is all refactoring and polishing. I think I can do it outside of this call uh, of this uh, video session. So actually I'm very happy. So before I didn't know anything of how to integrate smart contract into you know your Swell application, but with help of tools like ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot, I can actually do it without even understanding what's going on. Well, maybe now I understand a little bit. Hey, please finish the transaction. I want this loading animation to be gone. So, if it executes correctly now and we we'll get token number 11 i think we will wrap up there oh nice and we got some transaction detail and token number 11 here under my face 
So thank you all for watching. This is how I basically learn new stuff when I don't know. I either Google or chat GPT in. So if you like it, please leave like, subscribe, let, let me know your feedback in the comment section and uh, see you in the next video here. Ciao.